Welcome back to the Seek Extend News Agency. Today we are talking about CrossFit and doping again. So recently there's been some uh, kerfuffle in the CrossFit community in regards to a female athlete being accused of taking performance enhancing drugs. She did a 280 clean at what looks to be, has to be single digit body fat. Multiple people accused her of being on gear. She defended herself. Dave Castro reshared it and defended her and believes CrossFit. I think his words were CrossFit is just that good. Uh, the CrossFit Games page shared it. A CrossFit Games competitor, Ian the Rhino, I'm not sure his actual name, or his second name, sorry, not his actual name. I'm sure his second name is not Rhino. But he commented on it. He's two times CrossFit Games competitor, I believe, and he said this is basically what happens in CrossFit Games. You might have remembered we made a doping video on CrossFit where we kind of went through the different tiers of kind of the act levels of activity that goes on in CrossFit in regards to performance enhancing drugs. Some people had a little bit of a kind of disagreement with what we're saying. They said we had no evidence. Uh, the vast majority of people who are heavily involved in sports understand inherently that we, the evidence is the CrossFit athletes themselves in regards to their activities, which we'll touch on in a minute. Zach made a quick video on Ian's post and how they actually deleted Ian's post and his comments on it and how just some of the kind of stuff around that. So I definitely recommend going watching Zach's video and it'll, you'll see it kind of aligns with a lot of the stuff we were saying in our doping video. Yeah, there's a few like really important points to get to and we'll go through them kind of in order. The first point is on sponsorships, the influence of sponsorships on positive drug tests or positive drug tests coming out. So this is something that isn't new in sport, right? Even in, in fairly heavily dubbed sports, NFL, NBA, international soccer, they all have internal testing structures and you'll very, very rarely see a case. So it might be one to five cases a year of an adverse analytical finding from a drug test being presented or being kind of followed up on. In a lot of cases, what the, the drug testing in internally in organizations is used for is Firstly, in order to keep athletes in line, so you keep everyone on roughly level pegging. You also allow people who are coming into the sport or kind of upstairs within a sport, so youth athletes who are trying to get into a sport, you try and test them a small bit more frequently, a bit more rigorously. And in those cases, the kind of younger people coming in do tend to get popped a bit more frequently. And then the last thing you have for internal drug testing and why they might use it is so your sponsors are one step removed from the kind of doped athletes or that kind of negative connotation of doped athletes. So if you have a sport like the UFC and you have bigger organizations wanting to sponsor them like Reebok or something like that, it's very important for those organizations that they can say, no, these athletes are tested. We test with X, Y, and Z organizations. In the case of the UFC, they brought in USADA. So that's legitimate testing. It's important to note, however, though, that the sponsors provide the money for the sport. That money is what runs the organization. And without those sponsors and the backing of those sponsors, the sport doesn't exist. So it doesn't matter how good the community is in your CrossFit box or the local competition scene is in your CrossFit box. The big money comes from big sport and that comes from the larger sponsors. So in, in Ian's comment, he talks about larger Reebok athletes having been tested and, and they should have been popped and that test or they might have gotten popped and the test was kind of gotten rid of. That happens every single day, every single week in most large sports, like big money sports that you typically watch on television. So Zach made an argument for introducing, for example, what are putting themselves on the table for more rigorous testing. I would, in fact, make the argument for the opposite happening. So CrossFit is a little bit different from, for example, the Olympic sports or some other kind of high level multinational sports. So Zach, um, Seb and Clarence made videos earlier this year and they had a very, very in-depth argument on the prevalence of anti-doping and should or, or should it not be done. They both put a lot of thought into their process and their arguments. But I think in terms of CrossFit, I think the main issue with CrossFit in regards to anti-doping and simply, I suppose, not the it is lying, I suppose, directly lying to the athletes is that CrossFit has a huge, huge cohort of amateur athletes who come into CrossFit and who are very, very uninitiated in regards to what is possible, both from the male and female physiology. So... When people come into weightlifting, another incredibly dirty sport. So we're not, you know, we're not, uh, we're not pointing any fingers at anyone here because there's a lot of fingers pointing back at us in regards to weightlifting. But when you come into weightlifting and you see athletes like Lasha snatching 223 kilos or 225 kilos in training, and then you snatch 40 kilos and you go, oh, 
I'm never going to snatch 225 kilos. It's immediately obvious. Weightlifting is self-explanatory in regards to what's possible performance. And you'll learn very, very fast what you're capable or not capable of doing. Everyone, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on what side of the, the barrel you're on, everyone understands that weightlifting is inherently involved with drugs and the best athletes, for the vast majority of them, use performance enhancing drugs. The issue with CrossFit is that we get a lot of what we call UAS or people who come in with the onset adult athleticism. So people who come late into sports in their 20, late 20s, 30s, 40s, who've never done any sport before, have very low concept of what's possible naturally via normal training hours and what is possible to achieve with this performance while looking a certain way. A lot of people love doing CrossFit and Dara's owned the CrossFit gym. I've trained in loads of CrossFit gyms for a long time. Dara's trained in multiple different CrossFit gyms. We know loads of CrossFit owners. We coach CrossFit athletes. We know loads of people involved in CrossFit. And a lot of people do love CrossFit and competition and it's great. But to be honest, what a lot of people want to do with CrossFit is they just want to look better naked. Loads of people come to CrossFit and they just want to look a little bit better. I'd, I would say the vast majority of people involved in CrossFit classes day to day who look up to athletes just want to look a little bit better naked. But what you'll often see in CrossFit classes is people going to a gym for literally five years, half a decade, and looking the exact same, doing the exact same weights. Now, this isn't really a jab at the CrossFit method, but rather what they don't particularly understand is that they might be doing the same training, but to a lesser volume, but they do look nothing like the athletes they aspire to. Uh, so it's it's the disingenuous part from crossfit is not so much that they are hiding tests from athletes but it's rather just the image they're presenting to amateurs who don't really understand would be the kind of main gripe i would however though argue for the fact that i think crossfit could just do away with drug testing if you look at strongman for example they are everyone knows strongman is not drug tested everyone knows there's zero drug testing in strongman at any levels and two of the most famous and most popular strength athletes in the world are both strongman athletes, Eddie Hall and Half Thor Bjornsson. They are phenomenally popular. They would be what I would call just celebrities. They are not just famous athletes or famous strength athletes on social media or famous YouTubers. They are just, in general, famous people. They are just flat out, good old fashioned, John Wayne famous Celebs. people. Celebs. Just celebrities. And they are, and most people will understand that they are, of course, using performance dancing drugs. A lot of people do strongman. No, not many, but a lot of people do strongman and don't take drugs and they're fully aware of it and it's not an issue for them. You'll be like, oh, you, you know everyone else is in gear and they're like, yeah, but they're like, I still like strongman and there's no issue. I think it's possible for a sport to be reinvented or represented in a way where drug testing can be absent, but people still enjoy the sport and understand that's that what they need to do to be better at that sport. Because make no mistake, CrossFit at that level at the games is not possible without drugs now people might say oh there's one in a million at least there's freaks and for example the lady in question who kind of sparked this whole debate could genuinely be that one in a billion but there is definitely not 200 one in a billion at least doing crossfit considering how low a population of crossfit athletes there is across the world given like in a ratio related to the population of the earth they are not all freak athletes they're all certainly very very good athletes they're all certainly talented they train hard but they are, there's 40 of them are not freaks of nature. No. So it's not possible for, for that to be the case. So CrossFit can never go back in relation to performance. Same way in the, I'd argue, weightlifting can't really go back in terms of absolute weights. But I would argue that they're in a position where it's possible they could silently do away with testing and still have a successful sport. But again, obviously, there's a lot involved in that. The interesting thing to tie this back into the kind of reaction to, to the CrossFit post, to that athlete in, like, that individual athlete we're talking about here, right? We need to kind of preface all of this by saying myself and Gurf really don't care. Yeah. We think this athlete's phenomenal athlete. She's clearly really talented. All those CrossFit Games competitors are phenomenally talented, genetically talented people who work really, really hard and a lot of them take drugs on top of it. If you are interested in this and you're like either calling us out on some BS or you think we're kind of being harsh on this, just take a look at a few like KPIs, key, key performance indicators, and see does this make some sense. So when you look at females or males in the CrossFit Games, kind of top 20 or top 10 Games athletes who are, are showing up at the Games very, very frequently, you're talking about... Like, for example, Schmatch Major. Schmatch Major. Yeah. Schmitz Schmoening. Schmitz 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 You're looking at 
so if you look at firstly weightlifting numbers you're usually looking at a 140 plus snatch you're usually looking at kind of 160 170 plus clean and jerk you're talking about national level competition in weightlifting they're not going to win nationals they'll certainly show up to national levels their body weight usually mid 80 kilos sometimes they get up around 90 kilos so they're already at a national level for weightlifting competition uh usaw whatever it is Next, you look at their actual strength numbers. So their strength numbers usually aren't phenomenally good, but they're certainly getting to like US APL nationals. They're going to be able to compete at those kind of levels. Possibly some of the events might leave them down. Usually their deadlift is quite good. Their squat is quite good. Their bench mightn't be quite up there, but if they were to train and push that for a small bit more, if they knew maybe a month or two in advance, they'd certainly get up around those numbers. So we've already created a super total athlete now who, if they were clean and competed in both of those competitions, would be at finals level, right? They'd get to the last level of competition, possibly top 30 to 50 in the country or in the US, right? 350 million people. The next thing you need to look at is what do they look like in terms of complete and opposite utter sports performance? What do their aerobic values look like? Most of these guys are running sub 18 minute 5Ks or they're certainly running sub 19 minute 5Ks. There's some of them are getting over like between 15 and 16 minute 5Ks in events where they've already competed that day or previously for a number of days. So it's not like a 5K runner showing up and running a phenomenal 5K time. These guys are running those times when they're fatigued. The females are also running phenomenally competitive 5K times. Their mile times tend to be very, very good. Now, once you get into the more specialized stuff like 400 and 800 meter runs, they do drop off a small bit. But certainly at the kind of middle distance, they are very, very competitive. So then we look at body composition and morphology. Overall, what you might see, the only disadvantage of a top level CrossFit athlete having is if they were to go into a professional sport like American football or uh, soccer or rugby, their height and their stature might be a bit too small. But if you were to put those into a any other sport, right? Something where you're not physically, if, even if it was something like jujitsu, their morphology and their kind of body composition overall tends to be very, very good. So you have athletes who are existing year round in a body fat percentage of somewhere between 10 and 15%. They are in great shape, a lot of lean tissue mass and a lot of lean tissue mass when their training volume is incredibly high, right? So hot. they're hot, they're they hot. look great. Hot guys. And yeah, girls. hot guys and girls, they look great. These body compositions don't hang around year round, right? So if you look at a bodybuilder, They'll be pretty lean and pretty clean all year round. They'll certainly get into much lower body fat percentages than a crossfitter ever would, but they're not in that shape walking around the every day. Even fitness Instagram models aren't walking around in this kind of nick all the time. So then how do you suddenly have performance in a strength or power output sport, performance in an aerobic and endurance sport, performance in a purely aesthetic sport, and then you have high skilled and kind of really high frequency training events like gymnastics and weightlifting that you have to practice very, very, very regular, like a, a frequency of at least three to five times a week. How are all these values so high? And to be honest, if you're regularly involved with a lot of athletes, you realize that drug use is, is more than likely the issue. I think where a lot of people are getting mixed up in the well, next point we'll talk about. It's not the issue. It's the helping factor. Yeah, it's the key indicator. Yeah. Uh, but the next thing we'll talk about is what that drug use will probably look like and why they can say, I'm not on steroids, but definitely be on PEDS. So traditionally, people think of like weightlifters, really aggressive, huge, chunky, ripped men and women who are lifting huge amounts of weights. And in that case, they're typically using some androgenics and some anabolics, right? So androgens something that's going to make someone more manly if you look at the the definition of an androgen it's to make someone more manly so more manly qualities higher levels of aggression higher levels of neuroticism higher levels of force outputs anabolics then will obviously help people gain muscle tissue so gain lean tissue mass there's also a whole suite of drugs that people are probably never aware of so uh, a lot of people will have heard of SARMs in the last few years, selective androgen receptor modulators. SARMs have been brought about as a kind of refined version of steroids, right? So they're a refined version of those anabolics and androgenics we were just talking about. And people often think they're, they're just more effective. In fact, they have their whole other suite of issues 
surrounding those. But what CERMs allow a lot of CrossFitters to do is they allow a lot of CrossFitters to be really selective with certain aspects. So you can take something that will emulate the effects of EPO. That's a CERM that people are taking. It's a lot cheaper to get than EPO. It's a lot more accessible for people to get than EPO is. And people take it not thinking they're taking EPO and then suddenly they have incredibly high outputs in the aerobic uh, kind of arenas. Also, there's a whole range of peptides and peptides are obviously going to be really effective for CrossFitters when you think the sport is literally about recovery and who can recover faster and have higher outputs for longer. So it's not just as simple as somebody saying, I'm not on drugs, I'm not on steroids, whatever it is, I've never tested positive for a steroid. A lot of the things these guys and girls are going to be taking don't even fall into the realm of steroids or anything along those lines in their wording, but they're definitely still bad substances and they definitely still work. So there's one other area I want to talk about in this in regards to the drug testing and Zach brought it up and it's a known tactic countries use in terms of what a tested sports or Olympic sports and it's the use of a sacrificial lamb. Now we know for a fact this happens. So prior to the whole uh, Icarus debacle, the Netflix documentary coming out, uh, David Rigert, uh, there was there was kind of an expose here a little bit in the early days of weightlifting about a decade ago where people talked about, so I think there was two Russian coaches caught in Canada for designer steroids and they were prosecuted for that. Around that time they came out the issue of, they talked about, someone speculated that they were using sacrificial lambs. The Gregory Ritrenkov documentary came out one of the questions or one of the things he mentioned in that is they actively sacrificed athletes in terms of drug testing to ensure that it made it look like they were testing athletes. So sometimes these athletes were athletes who were on the way out and who were never going to win a medal again. So it was easy to get rid of them. Nothing was lost by getting rid of them because they were not a medal hope. So it was a high profile athlete, high enough for outside nations to go, OK, look, Russia is or whoever was in this Russia, for example, in this case, they were testing this kind of top five in Russia athletics member who was never going to make the top three realistically so it looked like they were actively pursuing their top athletes or they'd have a name who's up and coming or a name who's on the way down who's time for them to go and then they will actually test those and make it look like they are testing their athletes proactively to make it look like they do in fact then uh, test all their athletes very rigorously which is not the case uh, a great book in regards to that is uh, The Russian Affair by Gregor Vitrinkov a uh, very good audiobook as well if you want to listen to it it's like popping someone who came third at the games, isn't it? Like an up and comer kind of guy, like, who's not really a superstar, but it it looks like you're popping people. Schmitty Schmerad, like yeah. What's his name? But this is a kind of like this is textbook. This is not anything yeah. new in sports. It's not anything revolutionary in sport. There's definitely more elaborate things going on to test pa- or to pass tests and all these different things. But this stuff is like soap opera doping in sport one oh one. Yeah. Um, let us know your thoughts in the comments on the whole current debacle I think you'll see that none of the the usual CrossFit media people will probably talk about this it's likely they'll, they'll ignore it and most likely the you know the YouTubers or the big podcasts or stuff like that they probably won't really touch on it I'd say hopefully Derek will get his little Canadian fingers into it yeah Derek no beef Derek look. no beef Derek thanks for watching guys